Uh, my name is Johnny Savory. I was 14 years old uh, in junior high in Peoria, Illinois, when the Peoria Police Department um, came to my school. My principal asked me to um, go to the conference room with him. There I met those officers there, and they asked me did I know about the death of James Robinson Jr. and Connie Cooper, and I told them that I did not know anything about it. They asked me, they said, sure, you can do something to help us, you know, solve this crime. So after telling them I did not want to talk to them, they still convinced me to leave with them, and I went to the police station with them. Um, I was allegedly the only outsider to see them alive the day before the murder, uh, other than their parents. Um, they asked me to see if I remember anything, or anything that could be helpful. Did I, did I see anything unusual? But there's nothing I could remember because when I left, everybody was alive. Okay, this was a double murder. Uh, James Robinson, who was 14 years old, and Connie Cooper, his sister, was 19 years old. Both were found stabbed to death in their home on January 18th. And the question they asked was about that murder. I knew they knew that I did not do that. But what was confusing is, it was almost like they were trying to brainwash me into that I knew something that I did not know. And then they turned around and brainwashed me from, you can help us, to you did it. It was like from one extreme to another, you know, you, you calling me liars, you know, I wasn't used to none of that stuff. So all I really wanted to do from that point on was just go home. So any question they asked me, I didn't answer. Or I answered, I just answered it, you know, to the best of my ability. First it was, you know, the two detectives that took me from the school, but then it became that officer, you know. And, and after 10.30, asked me would I take a polygraph test, I took one. They still didn't let me go home. I finally, uh, they took me to the juvenile detention center, but they had lied to my dad unbeknownst to me that they were gonna bring me home because I wasn't a suspect. I had no involvement in the crime at all. I finally went to bed that night about one o'clock in the morning. They came back the next day at about eight o'clock in the morning and got me and resumed interrogations all over again. Now mind you, in, time, in between that time, I hadn't eaten nothing. I haven't seen my dad. So they interrogated me until about 10.30 that morning. I finally got a chance to see my dad. But he was so angry that we couldn't communicate because he couldn't understand what was going on. I did not know what was going on, and it just made it bad. It just was chaotic because we couldn't communicate. Yeah, it, that came the next day, you know, during that, um, the next day of questioning. And at that point, not the same officer, but different officers, like two or three officers at a time asking me different questions and expecting me to answer each one of them correctly. I couldn't do it. It's like one person would ask, where were you at? Other person would ask, uh, what kind of clothes you have on? Next person would ask, um, uh, what did you do that day? So it was like asking me three different questions at the same time and expect you to answer each question, you know, based on, you know, I couldn't do it. I was, I was just discombobulated. What they did was, after a certain point, I think 7.30 on the night of 26, January 26, they broke my wheel. I didn't no longer have the, 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 the wheel to, you know, to continue. All I wanted to do was go home. And it was Ed Bowers, he was a polygraph examiner, another one, different from the one that I had seen the day before. This one here was a lot more crueler, a lot more um, verbal. And uh, in the middle of us, the second polygraph examination, he got up, he called me, you murderer, you liar, you this, that, and other. So <clears throat> the polygraph exam ended. So I was standing there, I was crying, and uh, the lady police officer, Marcella Brown at the time, when she came in, um, she assumed that I was crying because I was guilty. She didn't realize that I was crying, at least I think she didn't realize, I don't know for sure, that he had just, you know, verbally ass uh, uh, assaulted me in every aspect of being a human being or being a child. And uh, I, I just wanted to end 
So she began to question me and worried me along. Where did the murders take place? You know, I would say, well, in the living room. She'd say, well, you sure it didn't take place somewhere else? Because I didn't know where it took place. So she would, everything I would say would be wrong, and then she would tell me the right thing to say. And then once she was finished, she asked me, would you sign the confession or would you, if I write it down, would you sign? I said, no. So I had enough sense not to do that. And um, it just, they got angry with me because I wouldn't sign the written confession, and then that was it. My life was over at that point, just that simple. In 60 seconds, I lost everything.